Got it! I like this AI generated porn. Seems much more natural than the real thing. Good evening and welcome back to your most trusted source of lies. Along with a full report on the Chinese spy balloon, we'll also be misleading you on other top stories tonight, including what's going on with ChatGPT, there's racists out there, and Pfizer is in hot water. But first, Americans have been anxious over the Chinese Communist Party gathering intelligence and spying on them with their spy balloon. But now that the Chinese spy threat has been eliminated, you can finally rest easy again and enjoy logging back into TikTok. But before it was shot down, the spy balloon had some mixed emotions around it, mainly that President Biden was refusing to shoot it down which he faced some criticism for from Americans, yet garnered unwavering support for his decision from the Chinese government. Wednesday of last week, the Chinese ambassador to America, Biden, ordered the Pentagon to shoot it down as soon as possible. Now, the soonest it could have been shot down is what's called immediately. So why the delay? Well, if you don't have a degree in gender studies, then you clearly don't understand spy balloon technology. So let me explain. After saying he wanted it shot down, Biden went on to explain why he didn't want it shot down, which was he didn't want it shot down over land because debris could cause damage when falling to the ground. And thus, President What Classified Docs Biden did a stellar job of protecting the ground from damage while electing to damage America's national security instead. But once the spy balloon was finished gathering what it needed for its spy mission, Gavin Newsom's predecessor was given the green light to give the military the green light to shoot it down over waters of South Carolina. And our transgender sister outlet, the Babylon Bee, speculates the US finally shot down the spy balloon because it was getting too close to Ukraine. Considering much of what they report unfortunately comes true, we're fact checking this statement as true. Another strategic advantage for the Chinese that came from Biden's decision in not shooting it down over land is that doing so could have had the spy technology on board accidentally landing at a laptop repair shop. And we all know what kind of troubling inconvenience that can cause. But coincidentally, with a spy balloon being shot down over the ocean, there's very little likelihood that the technology on board will be discovered. Funny how that works. Now we also want to take a moment to salute the technology wizards of the Chinese Communist Party. Their mission was to secretly spy on the US over American soil. So, with the best minds that the Chinese Communist Party can threaten into doing their bidding, they decided that flying an extremely large balloon in the sky, visible for miles, was the most stealth-like way to go undetected. And it was against all odds that their large balloon camouflaged in the bright blue sky was detected. But with the cutting edge military radar, as well as people using their eyes to look at it, it was surprisingly discovered. And we're receiving reports that next time, in an effort to better throw off advanced detection systems, Xi Jinping will write a note on it that says, not a spy balloon. Popular fascist freedom lover and purveyor of truth, Tucker Carlson, had a mangy ginger comedian on his top rated news show named JP Sears. During this segment, while expressing the terrorism of being two cis white men, they discussed and even made fun of the phenomenon of entitled employees of big tech companies pampering themselves all day rather than doing what evil capitalists refer to as work. Take a look. A lot of tech workers are being laid off. So with that in mind, we thought it'd be a good time to check in with JP Sears, our friend, he has his own day in the life video on TikTok. He's a comedian, a very smart man. JP, thanks so much for coming on. Are you surprised to see a lot of these TikTok stars laid off? Uh, Tucker, first off, it's great to be here with you on CNN. And sorry, I was late. I just came from shot book practice. And <laughs> I I'm a little bit offended that these people who produce nothing are being laid off. I don't understand the business model. It's clearly based on fascism. Uh, but I have to say, <laughs> seeing these TikToks Honestly, they inspire me because I realize I had been living my life like a fool. I was showing up at work and doing some work, 
but I realized I could actually reverse that trend and figured out how I could work less and pamper myself more. The terrible duo pointed out that big tech companies are laying off tens of thousands of employees and how the woke employees who don't work or contribute value are the first to be laid off. And many of those former tech employees were able to tune in and watch the segment because apparently they didn't have to go to work. And early polling shows they were just as offended by the segment as they should be. Now you may have heard the rumblings about the most advanced AI to reach the layperson, ChatGPT. It gives users the ability to give a few simple inputs, which then can generate incredibly well-written articles and artwork. And don't forget the porn. Many are raving about the technology as a way of enhancing creativity and work, and we applaud it too, as it surely will assist people in becoming stronger the more they rely on it for creativity and getting work done, rather than relying on the use of their own mind. In much the same way that using crutches when you don't need them makes your legs stronger. But there are skeptics out there that worry that advanced AI like this could cease being used to serve people the way it was intended when it was created and could adopt its own agenda and eventually take over and rule the very people that created it. But this is a far-fetched reality. To better understand how far-fetched of a reality this is, consider this. Long ago, people in this country created a government with the specific intent to serve them. Then that government eventually took on a life of its own, adopting its own agenda as it grew beyond the intent that it was created for, and ultimately took over, ruling the very people that created it. And there's obviously no similarities here with AI. So to believe that what's already happened could ever happen with AI is just crazy. There is nothing to worry about here. It's all part of our plan. In other news, the 65th annual Grammy Awards took place over the weekend, and countless people were shocked to learn that the Grammys are still a thing. But they are, and with a large CNN Plus level viewership, some were equally astonished to see a Satan praising performance by Sam Smith and Kim Petras. No idea who those people actually are. But apparently, some of the seven viewers of the Grammys don't also worship evil, as they were none too pleased with the display, calling the performance demonic. But that is a completely unfair characterization of the performance. It wasn't demonic at all. It was satanic. The performance was immediately followed by an ad for Pfizer. to you by Satan. Weird how there seems to be no God in Hollywood, but there's plenty of Satan. Makes it rather complex to speculate what Hollywood's agenda is. Well, don't think too long and too hard about that or else you might see what's obvious. Instead, look over there, it's a balloon. And while you're looking at the balloon, please don't notice how Biden just freed one of the planners of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. But please do know that Hollywood and the forces running it appreciate your continued viewership. In other news, far-left liberals are outraged that a black man won an Emmy Award for Best Comedy Special, a man named Dave Chappelle. Now on the left, we know that the best way to end racism is to make everything about race. So let's do that. Accordingly, countless people, who are mostly white, were outraged when Dave Chappelle, who again is black, released his comedy special entitled Closer. And working with the precedents of logic already set forth from the outraged people, we can accurately deduce that the outraged white people disapproved of Dave Chappelle's comedy special, who is black once again, purely on the basis that he is black. And after black Dave Chappelle won a Grammy for his special, the unapproving white people's rage and racial hate turned up a notch. But what's the solution for this racism spewing from the liberal community? Well, taking a further page out of their own book, perhaps the best possible solution is that these racist white liberals need to pay Dave Chappelle reparations so that racial justice can be served. And to be fair, all these racist white liberals may not have had distant relatives who were racist slave owners. However, they themselves are in fact racist. So if anyone should pay reparations, it should be them that are given the opportunity. And if they truly stand for racial justice and are willing to stand on the grounds of their own logic, 
they'll of course be happy to do so. And finally, Pfizer is in hot water, and it's not just because there's a warm climate where Satan lives. UK regulators have ruled that Pfizer is guilty of violating three sections of the British Pharmaceutical Code of Conduct practice. As a result, you can expect the harsh consequences of Pfizer being permitted to continue doing what they've been doing exactly as they've been doing it. All for your protection, the system is working. That's it for tonight's news! Because you have Stockholm Syndrome, you should now feel very well protected by us. And if you see any spy balloons in the sky, do not shoot them down. But if you see any free speech, please shoot it down. Good night! Hey, before you go, I want to let you know, I think there's two types of people in this world. Those who like to live in fear and those who like to live in freedom. And my entire freedom line of merch is designed for those of us who love to live in freedom. All of the shirts, hoodies, laser etched tumblers, hats, and other goodies are clinically designed and proven to be safe and effective at promoting freedom. We'll release the safety data on that in about 75 years. Now, I don't know about you, but I truly believe freedom is the very thing that makes life a precious gift. And that's exactly what I had in mind when designing every piece of merch in the freedom line. Because I wanted to give people a way to promote freedom and spread the freedom vibes quickly and easily wherever they go. Now, if you're someone who loves to live in fear, then I assure you, you will not like a single thing in the Freedom line of merch. But if you're someone who loves to live in freedom, I'd invite you to check out all the classics, the best sellers, the new designs, only at awakenwithjp.com.